Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Crosby Church this morning. We're so glad that you're here. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what a Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hear it from heaven. You've been faithful through every song. You've been faithful forevermore. You have done great things. Oh, and I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. You will do great things. things in our lives. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and give him a big Colgate smile this morning? Can you do that? Aren't you glad someone used dial? If you're wearing a mask, just tell them, trust me, I'm smiling under this mask. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to continue to worship God with this next song. We're surrounded with his power, his grace, his mercy. Yeah. 
nowadays, huh? It's not really hard to find a topic that we could choose to battle over in today's world that we live in. We also have personal battles that we struggle and deal with, but it's ironic, right? Or is it ironic or is it God, right? <laughs> today's Sunday school lesson was about when do we, what battles do we choose to pick? See, there's battles that we could pick and choose to fight, but are they battles that we should pick and choose to fight? because his word says that it's not about food or what we eat, it's about joy and, and coming together as a body of Christ. And I think about, as I read, you know, after Jesus had performed the miracle with the, the loaves and the bread and the Pharisees not being happy that Jesus is performing these miracles and they had written off all these other ones with like luck and coincidence and all these other things. And so they start demanding Jesus to do things. Perform a miracle now, prove to me who you are. And Jesus leaves. <laughs> He sighs and he leaves. See, that's a battle that Jesus could have chose to engage in. He could have won the battle with his words. He could have proven who he was in the moment, but it was a battle he chose not to engage in. We fight one another when we shouldn't be fighting one another over topics that are gray. We're going to call them the gray topics or pastor will call them the minor topics. We need to come to agreement on the majors that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. Because guess what? If I'm so ready to argue with you over the things that are gray, you're never going to seek me out for the things that are black and white in the God, in God's word. You're never going to come to me and say, Leslie, I'm struggling with this area of sin in my life and I need prayer. You're not going to seek me out because I've already hurt your feelings and wronged you and judged you on things that ultimately do not determine your salvation. There are things that matter that are going on that we need to speak truth and life and love into. I'm not diminishing the situation that our world is in by any means. My heart grieves for the situation that we are in. But we need to stop and choose more wisely the battle that we engage in and the battles that matter. We seek and battle them through, open, through looking to Jesus and say, give me guidance, give me direction, give me discernment on when to talk. Because there are some people in your life, just like the Pharisees, who had already seen, who had already heard, and they had made a decision that Jesus was not someone they were going to follow. That is not a person I'm going to get into an argument with. Because no matter what I say or what I prove to them, they have already determined Jesus is not who they're going to follow. And at that point, it's Jesus' job and the Holy Spirit's job to change them, not mine. It's not my job. I want our church, I want the body of Christ to fight on the topics that matter. Life and death, salvation and separation from Jesus. 
But we have got to stop fighting on the gray areas because no one will come to you if that's what you're fighting about. Church, I feel so privileged when people come to me and share their hurt and their pain. I thank them. Thank you for knowing that I'm trustworthy with this. Thank you for knowing that I will keep this private and that I can pray for you and that I will continue to pray for you. I want to be that person and I'm not going to be that person if I'm fighting over dumb, petty, gray stuff. I'm not. Let's pray. Church, God, we ask right now that you help us stop fighting about the small things. God, the petty things that we don't even remember what we're fighting about two days later. God, that our focus would be on you, God. That we would seek you out for discernment before we speak, before we post, before we talk about others, God. That we would seek your face and that we would fight the battle by going to you first. Because God, you have proven yourself to be trustworthy and true, God. You have proven your ability to change and transform lives, God but that we are not going to be a unified body of Christ if we cannot even agree on the small things, Father, that we would seek you out on those major things, those big things, God, that we would speak truth and life and salvation, God, into others around them, that that they would see that we are trustworthy because of the fact that we walk out our lives as a trustworthy person, that they would see we are obedient to your word because we've walked out our life as an obedient person, not that we're perfect, Father. God, help us to remove that burden of perfection on our life that holds us back from engaging in the things of your word and engaging in the things that you have called us to do, Father God, that there is no expectation of perfection. There is an expectation of obedience. God, help us to not be like the Pharisees who have seen and who have heard and who have encountered Jesus, but they refuse to accept him. God, help us to be a humble people before you. God, help us to love. God, love always wins, and thank you for that. God, I just ask for a renewal and a a presence so strong of your Holy Spirit today, Father God, that it would just, just burn inside so deep of us, God, that we would seek forgiveness. God, we would give forgiveness. We would make amends because of the arguments that we've had that have not made us, that don't matter, so that we can become a unified body for one purpose. God, to glorify your name, to worship your name, and that the world would see that you are real and that you do change and transform, Father. We thank you for who you are. In your son's name I pray, amen and amen. You guys can have a seat. Well, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I will be honest, I was super excited to drop my kid off, one of my children off today in Children's Church. Um, So I was just like, just to breathe for five seconds. I've been connected at the hip with them like you have since March. (laughs) So it's kind of nice to have that moment of separation. But I pray that you've taken advantage of this time that you've had together um, in church together to let them watch you worship. It's important that your children see how you worship your God so that they follow that. Amen. Um, So thank you for being here today. Like I said, thank you for any first time guests. We're honored that you've chosen Crosby Church this morning as your place of worship. Um, If you'll reach right in front of you, grab this connection card. It's basic information. We just want to get from you for being here as a first time guest. Um, Just fill it out, put it in the offering bucket. It's up here in the front when we do offering. So you have a few minutes to fill that out and write neatly. Likewise, church, if there's any updates, any prayer requests, That's for everyone in this room. Please use that form as well so that we can um, answer those questions that you have about our our church or or pray over those prayer requests. I promise you that those prayers are prayed over. They are are used in a Monday night prayer group. They are are prayed over. So don't think that this is just an act of nothing. It it matters. And we want to connect with you with that. So thank you guys for being here. Everyone looks so good this morning. All right, we're going to go ahead and go on to our morning announcements. If you'll turn your attention to the monitors.
Canon Study Guide will be $20 right in the bookstore. So ladies, if you want to participate in such a wonderful and splendid time, make sure you get to that front bookstore and grab your book, grab your study guide, and get plugged into the things of God happening right here in our church. And Tuesday at 5 p.m., we want to issue a resounding congratulations to all our graduates. We will be having a special dinner taking place. So we want all people that have graduated, whether it's from trade school, high school, graduate school, college, doesn't make a difference. This meal is for you. So make sure you get plugged into everything that's taking place right on our Facebook page and find out more information as we celebrate you as you graduate in the year 2020. And it is with great anticipation I get to announce our Shoes Off event, which is our young adult event, anywhere from post-graduation of high school all the way up to their 30s. Be sure to be there for this event on June the 19th at 7 p.m. It is going to be such an exceptional time of food, fun, and fellowship with a little bit of a twist. You don't want to miss it. It's hosted by yours truly. And the reason why it's called Shoes Off is because when Moses took his shoes off in the presence of the Lord, something special really happened. And when you're at home, I'm pretty sure you take your shoes off. It's super relaxed. And that's what we want this event to be. So if you are a young adult and feel like you fit this category, be sure to be there at RSVP and Caleb at CrosbyChurch.com. Just let us know that you're going to be there so we can send you all the information needed for this particular event. We are so excited to take you place. We can't wait to see you there. And that is it for this week's announcements. Look, we are so glad you're here. But now, prepare our hearts to be ordered the service. It's about to take place, and we'll see you guys next week. Amen. Oh, it's good to see each and every one of you here. Give yourselves another great big hand. You're here this morning. Wow. What a special time it is and what a great anointing and presence of the Lord that we sense and that we feel. Uh, knowing that it's in Him, we live and breathe and have our very being. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on now. It is, uh, it's good to gather. It's good to be here. It's good to, uh, um, what I want to say, feel a little bit more normal. I got a lot of echo going up here, guys. I don't know where that's coming from, but um, it's, good to, it's good to just feel a little bit more normal today, being in church and just seeing each and every one of you and just, you know, this has been a crazy couple of weeks, amen? And uh, there is such a refuge to be in the sanctuary, um, use the word sanctuary, a place that we should all come and feel safe feel like we're where we need to be, that we're going to hear what we need to hear from who we need to hear it from. And uh, just to, to be a part of that and a part of the family of God. Uh, you know, the family of God is extensive. It's so much more vast than what we acknowledge and realize sometimes because there's not the church in Africa and the church, you know, in England and the church. In, no, no, no. It's just the church. It's just the church. It's not the persecuted church and the free church and the, no, it's just the church. We're just the body. It's just one body. Um, and so we need to realize that and we need to reach out and, and uh, pray and believe God and push forward. Uh, we're going to do a, several elements today in our service. Um, if you're a parent here, we uh, did open up our children's ministry this week. Uh, so that's a new layer that we're opening up as we're doing that. And, and uh, if you didn't know that, we do have our children's ministry opening. And they're, they're um, you know, taking care of everything that needs to be taken care of, how it needs to be taken care of, doing the best we can do with um, what needs to, needs to happen with, you know, sanitization and all of those things and everything. Um, we are seeing all things open up a little bit more. We do want to still continue to be wise, to be cautious um, to those that, that need that extra layer of protection. Make sure you do that. Uh, those that are watching, if you're at home watching and, and you need to be at home for a while, feel free to be at home. Uh, that does not disconnect you from the body. You're, you're the body. We're the church. And so however that needs to happen is how that needs to happen. Uh, I'm going to ask for a few people to come forward. I just want to acknowledge them and they're going to be making some transitions in life and we just want to pray over them and believe God. I want to ask uh, Willie Hutchinson and his wife Barbara, would you guys come? I, I think I saw you here earlier. Um, if you'd come and I don't know if the kids are with you or where they're all at. I know you've got grandkids. Willie and them, they're going to be moving to Mississippi and, and, and they've been such a breath of fresh air in my life and my spirit and uh, Willie and I got to go out and have lunch together the other day and just love on each other and as we uh, just continue to see God move forward and 
uh, as we continue to be that spiritual covering in, in his life and as he talked about what God was calling him to and what God was speaking in his heart. It's, come on up here, brother. Come on up here. Come on up here. Bring those, bring those youngins up here too. Uh, I, just, I just love his family so much. And uh, come up here on stage with me, guys. Come up here. And um, as uh, they're going to be moving, and God's 20 acres, correct? 20 acres that you're going to be moving to. And not sure exactly what, what God's going to unfold in their heart and in their life in that. But uh, we just talked about that spiritual covering and being a part of it. And so all we're doing is, is you guys aren't leaving us. We're just sending you and you're extending us. Amen. So we're extending there. Yes, Amen, my brother. And uh, also, Richard and Ladina, uh, would you get, there you are. Is, is Richard here? Is he, he he flies in tonight. Okay, he's in Arizona right now and be flying in. And also, Shirley is. Shirley is your mom here? She, she's mama here? Where's she at? Okay, if you'd like to come up here, I'd love to have you come up here too. I, I, uh, they're going to be moving and uh, going to be moving to Arizona. There you are. Um, going to be uh, moving to Arizona and uh, just the whole family is going to be relo- relocating. Eh, it's kind of sad for pastor, but again... Um, we're not losing you. We're sending you and extending us. Amen. And so we just, just believe, believe God in that. And uh, we, you guys have been such a blessing in the church. And it's been a long time. It's been a long time. We've been together a long time. And um, so it's just something that, you know, it's a sad moment, but yet an exciting moment. And uh, we love them all so much. And uh, um, they're going to be uh, moving in some areas of business, believing God for his blessings and favor to continue to unfold. We're praying over that. And, and God, had, a long time ago, kind of gave me a prophetic word in what they were doing. You just believe that God's moving in that. And, and brother, we're just going to continue to see things and, and uh, move forward. So would you all just stand up, stretch your hand forth, and we're just going to pray over each one here. Mm. Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you, oh God. For Will and his family and for Richard and his family. And God, we just pray, Lord, that you would bless them, that your hands and your strength would be upon them. God, that your wisdom and counsel would go with them. And Lord, we as a, a local body, our hearts are selfish and we want to keep them. But Lord, we know that you have a purpose and you have a plan in their lives. And Lord, as you've spoken into to Willie's heart and his spirit of, of reaching and touching others, Lord, I pray your anointing, your favor, your wisdom, your counsel upon them. Lord, I pray, God, in the business endeavors, Lord, that your blessings would continue to flow and move, that, God, the kingdom becomes more prosperous as we are prosperous in you. Lord, that your blessings would abide. And Lord, we thank you for what these families have meant in our church the life that they bring and produce and the joy that they have and the spirit that they walk in. Lord, I just pray your blessings, your favor, your hand, and your anointing upon them. And all they do, Lord, God, they would see you go before them. And Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 and amen, amen. And, uh, you know, I'm going to give you a big hug, brother, if it's okay. Amen, amen, amen. Now listen, that doesn't give you all permission to go out hugging and everything else, okay? So, you know, um, just believe in a special anointing, a special time, a special moment. A um, lot happening today. Give the worship team another great big hand. They just do such a tremendous job. Um, believing God as we move forward in all these things. And uh, um, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do right now. I'm supposed to take an offering, is that right? Um, okay, I, you know, I just... Uh, I get emotional in these moments, and uh, I get I get discombobbled. But uh, we're going we're going to receive our our gifts, our seed, our offering to the Lord today. Uh, believing God, continually moving us forward, and walking in His favor, His hand, His anointing, and His blessings as we give to the Lord. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to have the offering buckets at the front, and the riser seating they'll be at the back right there, uh, where you can just bring your gift to the Lord. Uh, that seed you're sowing, knowing that God is the God of increase, that tithe and obedience to his word, that laying out of, you know, and, and, and as we give to the Lord, it's such an honor, it's such a joy to be able, because we're able to give to him means he's given to us. But all of us, we exchange either time 
or talent for income. That's an exchange rate. Uh, we, change, we exchange time or talent, one or the other. You know, sometimes you get paid not for your time, but for what you can do, produce, and know, you know. And then others get paid for time and not that one's better than another. But, but, but that's how we exchange. That's how we operate in commerce. And uh, as you give that gift to the Lord, whatever that portion is, that portion is representative of your very life. Because you gave your life in that time and that essence, that moment to, to earn whatever that income is, that portion of that. So that is, that is a portion of your life. And so as you bring that to the Lord, that is again a surrendering of your life to Him. That's saying that it's in you I live and breathe and have my very being. And so as we are called to be owners of nothing but stewards of everything, I'm going to steward the life that God has given me. And I'm going to return that portion that he has honored me with. And so that's what we do as we bring that gift to the Lord, as we give that tithe, as we give that offering, as we sow that seed, knowing that God's a God of increase. And so we're just going to bring those to the altars in the back. We'll bring it to that symbolic altar right there where the offering buckets are. So let's pray over the offering today as we continue to believe God forward from where we are to where he can take us to. Amen. Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you, O oh God, that you are God. Lord, we pray, God, that you heal our lands. You said that if we would repent, if we would humble ourselves, if we would seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, that, God, you would hear our prayers and heal our lands. Lord, we pray right now, God, that you would move. And, Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. This portion, this moment, this time that's representative of our life, surrendered. Lord, I know that you honor every gift that is given as it's given with a cheerful and a joyful heart. Not out of act of duty or obedience, but it's an act of love, an appreciation and gratitude that we surrender to you today. And so we pray that you would bless us in our endeavors, bless us in our quest, in what you have moved in our hearts to do. Lord, we pray your blessings to go before us in all things. Bless our homes and our family as we establish this gift today. You said your blessings would transcend generations. And we believe forward in that in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen, amen, and amen. Well, come on, give him some praise today. Amen. Let's bring your gift to the altars today. Jonathan, pray over the word this morning. Lord, Heavenly Father, we'll just come before you this morning to give you our first fruits of our day. But we just open up our minds and our hearts to receive of your word, Lord. Let us be doers and not just hearers of your gospel. Let us apply everything that we hear to our Christian daily walk with you, Father. In this we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, come on, give the Lord some praise now. 
It is so good to see each and every one of you. We just believe in God's going to do some phenomenal things, some incredible things. We have a lot of special elements today, and I want to speak to kind of that the graduates that are throughout our region, throughout our areas. The graduates went without so many things this year, those that are graduating at different levels and, and in high school and, and all of those things. There was... It's just a crazy time and a crazy moment and a crazy season. So we're going to address those things. And some of our graduates that are here, we're going to have a, a, a ceremony and a service here in just a, a little bit, acknowledging some of our, our young ones that are graduating out of our, our Mother's Day Out programs and what a fantastic job our Mother's Day Out staff does and how, how they've shined in all of these moments. And then also we want to pray over and acknowledge all of our graduates that are coming from whatever place that you're graduating. And some of you have... have been either homeschooling as far as in college or whatever it is, online classes or courses or whatever it is. We want to celebrate that. Uh, those that are accomplishing, those that are achieving, those that are, are moving forward. But I, I have a message that I want to bring to each and every one of us because regardless of where you're at in life, I believe God wants to promote you. God wants to graduate you. God wants to move you to a next and to another level in life. That God is not content with you being content. All right, that God is pulling greatness out of each and every one of us because he's built greatness in you. Everybody say, who, me? Everybody say, who, me? Yes, you. That God has built that in you. So God is wanting to move each and every one of us to another place of graduation, to another place and a level in him. So I want to talk to us today about the essence and the importance in the crazy world that we live in right now and what we see happening and what we see taking place all around us. I want to talk to you today about the word of God. Because the Word of God has the biblical solution for every problem that we face. For everything that, that ails our country, the Word of God actually, and that ails this world, actually has a solution. See, the Word of God gives us the tools of God to live the life of God out in every aspect of the lives that we live. So in the lives that we live, the Word of God tools us, equips us, and gives us the ability to live the word of God out in the life that God gives us. So yes, God gives us the ability to escape this world system. That's right. To escape this world system and this world's philosophies. God gives us the ability to step out of this system into his system. To walk in step with the Holy Spirit as a true indeed child of God. Dr. Burt Watson has been teaching this past Wednesday and he will continue up with that on what it is to truly be a child of God. Because we have this misnomer that's swept throughout the lands that we're all God's children. But that's actually not true. That's actually not biblically accurate. Because we become God's children when we accept that spirit of adoption by faith that we are grafted in as the body of Christ, that we then are children of God. Now the prophet Jeremiah sent a letter to the people of God who had previously been carried into exile into the idolatrous Babylon. And in Babylonia they were all kinds of sin. Now this is representative of a whole lot of different areas. Now Babylon was a major city in Mesopotamia that, that is in what we know now modern day Iraq. But as Jeremiah sent a a letter to the people that had been carried into exile, not only was it to them, but also the spirit of it cares, carries into those that are lost and trapped into any type of captivity. Now the prophetic realizes, listen to me, the prophetic realizes those that are held captive. Now many of us are captive today in all sorts of things. We're captive in our own thoughts. We can't get away from them. We can't escape them. They keep running through us. And then we feed them with different feeds. We watch a, a, a news stream or we watch a social media stream or we have this conspiracy or that system or this. And we feed our thoughts and we're held captive by our thoughts that produce us then through our thoughts sometimes our fears. And then our fears are there that hold us captive. And then those areas of unforgiveness and even those areas is something we don't talk about a lot, uh, a lot. But it's resentment of the choices that we've made in life. And we begin to resent ourselves from the circumstances that we have caused. And then we also find ourselves being held captive of, of, of addictions, but more important than that is unrealized addictions. Things that we're given to that we haven't even acknowledged in our life yet that we're given to those things. And those things can be areas as from gossip to physical or emotional or mental addictions. Whatever those things are, but addictions unrealized. But the prophetic knows 
that true freedom can only be found in a revealed word of God manifesting in our life. That there has to be a revelation of the truth of the word of God in our life and it's only that revelation that produces true freedom. So there's an empowering that comes from the Holy Spirit that quickens in our minds. That the Spirit draws us. There's a quickening that takes place that draws us to Him. So the Holy Spirit quickens in our minds the witness of the Lord. And so as we, as I've been teaching this, as we press into that presence of God, whether we press in into the Word, or we press in in service, or we press in in prayer, we press into that presence, that's when we can truly find an encounter with God. And so we have that encounter, that moment with God that produces a revelation in our spirit of who we are in Christ and who he desires to be in us. And until we have that revealed word of God that produces that revelation in who we are to be in Christ Jesus, we never truly understand that transformation because revelation brings transformation. In that transformation, you find true sacrifice that now all of a sudden, because I realize who I am in Christ Jesus and I've had an encounter with him, I come to that place that I understand that my life is not my life, that I am a steward of everything, an owner of nothing, that I need to present my lives as a living sacrifice unto God which is nothing more defined than a reasonable service so it's in the word of God we see it again and again the Babylon is referred to but it's not just a physical place it is that but it's not just a physical place but it also becoming a symbolic place of spiritual condition it's representing the condition of fallen man It's representing the condition of a fallen society. And in our society today, we see indeed a fallen system. We see a system that has become dysfunctional in so many areas. So in our society, we see a fallen system. We see the fallen system, and this is what it is because it's not what some of you are are thinking right now at this moment. Our fallen system is simply this. It's man trying to find purpose and meaning and a sense of wholeness and a sense of fulfillment without Christ and void of the Word of God activated in their lives. So in other words, as Babylon is trying to build their tower to reach the heavens, that they can then reach God by their own measures, their own works, and their own deeds, we ourselves now have become Babylon. That somehow we have thrown out the word of God and we thought that we could become our own gods and make our own way to heaven. That this world system has its own religion, has its own theology. And it's not willing to bend its heart to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Now we use the old adage that either Jesus is Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. But just because it's an old adage does not mean it is not true. That he is either Lord of all in your life or he's not Lord at all in your life. That it's not a pick and choose endeavor. That it's not that we can do what we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to do it. But in this system, it's becoming its own religious system that knows nothing of true worship. That knows nothing of worshiping in spirit and in truth. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But the prophetic speaks past that system. The prophetic moves into truths. The prophetic speaks a promise. And just as the prophet Jeremiah spoke a prophetic promise to those of that time, his promise before God is just as relevant to us at this time. The prophetic speaks a promise and says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now here's the part that we stop at and we don't read on. Then you will call on me, then you will come and pray to me, and then I will listen to you. You will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. When you seek me with your whole heart, then I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And then I'll break those chains of bondage. I'll break those chains of hatred and resentment. I'll break those chains of racism and despair. Then I'll break those chains and bring you back from captivity. See, this word 
applied becomes the formula for true biblical success in escaping a world system, enabling the child of God to then walk in step with the Holy Spirit and move in the things of God. So let's establish a couple of things this morning. And this is something that in a graduating era and moment in time that all those that are elevating needs to understand and needs to know. And let me clarify, that's each and every one of us. That you may not be downing a cap and gown and you may not be flipping a tassel, but God is moving and elevating in your life to a next level that he wants you to be in your spiritual walk in essence with him. Because I don't think like I used to think. I don't see things the way I used to see things. That God is continually elevating and moving me. That there is a graduation moment in my life in all types of areas. But let's establish this. So let's establish that God desires. That God wants. That God's purposed to bless you. It's found in the word of God. It is the prophetic of God. And that God desires to move in this. But however, you must then be feasting on the word of God. That you have to, even as the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. That we have to learn to pray effectively before the things of God. One day when Jesus was, was praying, and Luke 11, 1 records it in a certain place. And when he had finished, one of the disciples came up to him and he could have asked for anything. But he said, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray just as John had taught his disciples. Lord, teach us. And then we have to come to a full acknowledgement and understanding that we are not our own. That we are stewards of everything but owners of nothing. Therefore, we have to be stewards of what God has gifted to us. That includes the giftings, the callings, the blessings, the anointing, the potential that he has in your life. That we are accountable to God for what we do. Now listen to me. For what we do and what we do not do. We're accountable not only for what we do, but for what we do not do. We are accountable to God. For what we do or what we do not do with the potential, with the purpose, with the word, with the spirit that he's engrafted to us. In Jeremiah's writing, he uses the phrase several times, bring you back from captivity. Now this phrase implies a full restoration of life. A full restoration of every dimension of the fullness and the understanding and the measure and the blessings and the anointing. And the connection and the fellowship that he desires to have with you. The fullness of your relationship with him bringing you back from captivity. That he wants to restore in you. Even as he walked and talked with Adam in the garden, that's what God desires to do in each and every one of our lives. Jesus answered, said, most assuredly I say to you in John 8, 34. Whoever commits sin is simply, somebody help me with that one, a Slave to sin. Whoever commits sin becomes a slave to sin. But he wants to bring you back from captivity. Because therefore, if the son makes you free. (laughs) It's only through the engrafted word. By a filling of the spirit that gives us revelation and understanding. That produces then a real liberation that takes place in our spirit man and our life. That we can acknowledge and understand he who the son sets free is then back from captivity. That you are free indeed. See it's only Jesus. Plus nothing else. It's only Jesus that gives us the ability through the quickening of the Holy Spirit to be made truly free. That's why the prophetic said, when you seek me and find me, when you seek me with your whole heart, your whole heart is void of your own objectives, of your own thoughts, concepts, ideas, solutions, problem solving. I don't want my way, I want his way. See, God has a biblical intervention. Some of us need an intervention. God has a biblical intervention for every thought that you have. That's why the word of God says and instructs us to bring every thought into captivity if that thought would exalt itself above the things, the word, and the spirit of God. 
That God has a biblical solution and intervention for every thought that you have. And in this microscope of the word of God, we are instructed to weigh all things. We are instructed in this microscope of the word of God to compare all things. We are called to discern all things. We are called to to seek him in all things. And through the word of God, we are called then in the word of God to believe all things. That I believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than I would ever think, ask, imagine, or be able to understand in my finite mind the infinity of God. The fullness of the supernatural. The belief that God is able to do well whatever God desires to do. Amen. The psalmist writes in 119, how can a young person stay in that path of purity? Now, so often, here's where our minds go because we already have our world system solution. It's got to be a sexual thing. But that's not what the word of God here is referring to. It's not just maintaining a sexual purity, but a purity from a world system. And a world path. And a world's way of assigned thinking. How can a man, how can a man, how can a young woman, how can they keep their mind steadfast on the things of God? And then he tells us, by living according to the word of God. By living according to the word, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. For I have hidden the word of God in my heart to the purpose to the plan to the extent that I would not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your degrees. See, we have to learn to think biblically in regards to every part of our life. You know, I, I've shared this numerous times, but the, the what would Jesus do movement, I understand it, I get it, I get it. But I've never... S- prescribed to that. I've never made that part of who I am. It's never been about what would Jesus do? Because Jesus done did it. The real question that we're asking at that moment, at that moment of time is what are we going to do? But when you have hid the word of God in your heart that you would not sin against him, then the decision is clear and it's already made. See, what happens is if a man is taking great care in following a map to get to the destination that he wants to take. Wait a minute, that's probably not a good illustration because I don't know any men that follow maps. But if a man followed a map and he took great care to get to the destination that was assigned to it, if the map was incorrect, he's going to arrive at the wrong destination. See, good intentions does not equal good actions. Good desires to do right does not equate in doing right. Let me give you an example. First Chronicles chapter 13. David is going to bring the Ark of the Covenant. Remember the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. It has the laws of God. It's the abode of God. Upon it is the mercy seat where the blood is sprinkled that takes away the sin of man. It's between the two cherubims. And David is bringing the Ark of the Covenant, the presence, the abode of God back to Jerusalem. Wow, what a celebration. What a day this is. And he puts it upon a cart pulled by oxen. And the oxen stumbles and the presence of God shifts and the presence of God is about to fall to the ground. And so Uzzah with good intentions grabs the ark to upright it back so the presence doesn't fall and God strikes him dead. Now David becomes angered at God because David didn't obey the word of God and brought forth Uzzah's death in trying to do the right thing of what he thought at that moment. So David now is mad at God because God executes judgment because David didn't do what David was supposed to do. Talk about a bull in a china shop. The oxen stumbles. The presence of God is about to fall because the presence of God was to never be shouldered by oxen. It was to be shouldered by each and every one of us. That the presence of God was designed and built to be carried on the shoulders of man. 
so that we felt the weight, we felt the responsibility, and we felt the purpose of God on our shoulders. What's happened in our nation is we've took the word of God and we've put it on a cart and we said that's good enough and we've stopped shouldering the weight of the anointing and the presence and the fullness of God on our shoulders anymore. And we've relinquished our responsibility to something else. In the events of this world, in the fear mongering, hatred driving, division producing, 24 7 media feed, separating people in order to better control the system of godlessness. Where is the church? Prayerfully, hopefully the church can be found in a place of obedience. Hopefully. In Acts chapter 1, it tells us on one occasion while Jesus was, was eating with them, he gave this a command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my Father that he's promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. We read on in Acts chapter 2 in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on that day of Pentecost and the establishment of what we know now as the church. Receiving the promise of the Spirit, which then the purpose of the Spirit is they spoke the word of God with boldness. That the church became courageous. That the church became confident in Christ Jesus. We need a fresh outpouring. We need a fresh fire. We need a fresh oil upon the church that brings the church to be what God has intended for the church to be. A church of no compromise to a system of political correctness. Never fearful and obedient even unto death if necessary to be what God has purposed and called each and every one of us to be. There is only one church and there is only one body. Now the world system of temptation, it'll jump on you like stink on a skunk. Didn't see the green, station wagon car, skunk got squashed and there you are, you got the, nobody? Dead skunk in the middle of the road. Did you ever notice when you drive by one of those? It sticks with you. Your car like vacuums that smell in. And you're mile past it, but you're still smelling it. The system of this world will jump on you and the temptations thereof. But you cannot be led. You cannot be led by the world. In Luke chapter 4 verse 1, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from Jordan and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Wait a minute. Then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. If Jesus, Son of Man, Son of God, is accounted in the Word of God that he needed to be filled with the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, how much more do you think you need to be? See, in moments... The enemy will tempt you with everything enticing. The spectrum is as wide from sex, money, and power to as simple as self-will. Hey, I make my choices and my decisions. People don't tell me what to do. I'm the boss of me. I'm the comptroller of my life. I'm the one that runs things. I'm the problem solver. I'm the one that has the solution. I can make this happen. The spectrum is as wide It's from all the crazy things we've imagined to the simplest things is your self-will. Your self-will, the desires to govern yourself. In John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who has sent me. It's as simple as that. To do the will of him who has sent me. To finish his work. To finish his work. God has a purpose and a destiny on each and every one of us. We're going to have a 
a graduation ceremony for our MDO right now. We're going to pray over some of our graduates that are here and those. We're going to do all this. I'm going to come back and I'm going to conclude some thoughts here. I believe this is something that every one of you need to hear so that you walk with this long after you're out of here. So I'm going to turn this moment over right now to our Mother's Day Out program. We're going to have a short graduation ceremony. We're going to have some prayer over some of our graduates. Remember, each and every one of you is a graduate today if you'll receive the engrafted Word of God. I'm stalling to give you time to get up here and stuff. That's what I'm doing. I don't know if you guys are catching the, the, the signs or not, you know. I feel like, the, anybody remember the three amigos? Look up here, look up here, look up here. Does he, anybody? Okay, never mind. He's got to work for each and every one of us because he's graduating us today. Ms. Rhonda. Good morning. Um, we have a deal program for those that don't know, and unfortunately, it got cut a little short this year, so we didn't get to use what, do what we normally do. We have about half of our kids here this morning because of not being able to be here, but we're excited that we at least get to do this with them, and we're so proud of them. Some of these babies have literally been with us since the very beginning, like one years old. Um, maybe even babies, I don't know, but I know some of them were here at one. Um, and so it's kind of a sad moment, but a happy moment at the same time because they're going to be going to kindergarten next year. So um, if you guys are ready. All right, now we haven't practiced this, so when I call your name, you're going to come up here, okay? And I'll give you your diploma, okay? And then you're going to go to Miss Robin. Pastor Keenan, are you going to, and Pastor Keenan, okay? Pastor Keenan's going to turn your tassel, okay? You guys scared? Are you going to come up there? Okay. So our first graduate is Camden Doyle. Bethany Blackwelder. <laughs> Bethany. <laughs> Cannon Beckner. Pastor Keenan. Parents, you can get pictures too. I forgot to mention that, but if you want to come up and get pictures. Branson Davis. <laughs> Penelope Diostato. Ella Hoffman. Go to Pastor Keenan. <laughs> Olivia Howard. K. 
Cadence Hughes. She told me she was this old now. She's five. <laughs> Summer Lackey. Brooklyn Merlos. Jackson Pogue. Hadassah Powell. Bennett Stillwell. <laughs> Rylan Watley. Would the class of 2020 rise so we can get a picture of you all? Stand up. This is our Mother's Day Out class of 2020. Ms. Danielle, did you want to say anything? The class was taught by Ms. Danielle and Ms. Carla and Ms. Marina. They did an amazing job this year. Uh, parents, I just wanted to say um, thank you so much for just allowing me this time with your kids. This is a, something that I, I was put into that I didn't expect to love so much. And I, I hate that our time was cut short with them. But the time I did have with them, they've got a really special place in my heart. And I just pray that for y'all, as y'all could keep going on, just keep pushing into God and just keep pushing into your family because we love you and we want the best for you, okay? All right. And I want to say thank you to Robin. She was my assistant all year and she did an awesome job. All right, we love you guys. Awesome job. You can go back to your parents now. There it is. All right. Give them one more hand as they make their ways back to their seats. What an amazing, amazing day. They don't stay that cute as they keep graduating on up. Well, this is my wife, Chandela, and I'm Tom, the children's pastor here. And right now, we want to pray over all of those kids that are graduating from elementary school into middle school, so fifth graders and sixth graders. None of them are in here because they're all other places. But I want you guys all stretch your hands. Let's go ahead and just stretch our hands towards the children's department right now. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just pray. I just pray for these mighty, mighty children, Lord God, as they step into the next phase of life, as they move from elementary school into middle school where things get so much more difficult, God, that you let them be a ray of light, that you let them be able to, to feel your presence as they walk through these schools that are, are going to put so much in front of them that, that stops them from getting close to you, Lord God, that you would just break down walls and barriers in schools right now, Lord God. 
Lord, I pray for Christian friends to be found at this next level of schooling, Lord God, that they would come aside other children, Lord God, that are that are walking into this situation and, and they can grab a hold of each other and say, hey, we're in this together. We're going to be the light to this dark place. God, we just pray your protection and your blessings over them in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, here is our youth pastor. <laughs> well, praise God. I'm actually going to take uh, just a minute, and I want to pray over all of our middle school students uh, that are going into high school. Uh, wow, what a, a big accomplishment, but a huge change. And, and so if you guys could join with me as we pray for all of our middle school students, and uh, not just in our church, but listen, we need to be praying for our students all the time, everywhere, right? Especially right now during this time, amen? And so let's pray right now. Father God, Lord, we just thank you so much, God, uh, for all of our students at Crosby Church, God. We also thank you for all the students, God, of this region. Uh, Father, all the, these middle school students who are graduating, uh, moving into the freshman year of their lives, God, we just pray over them, God. We pray a special blessing, anointing, God, over their lives. We pray uh, during this time, just as our pastor's been preaching, that the word of God would be what establishes who they are, God that the word of God would be with them and go with them, God, that it would be hidden in their hearts, God, as they move into uh, this next stages of their life. I just pray, God, that you would use them, God, that your purpose would flourish in their lives, God, that they wouldn't be intimidated, but God, that you would give them boldness, God, as they move on uh, into the next grades of their life. God, use them to set our high schools on fire for the kingdom of God, Lord. We love you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen and amen. Amen. Well, I just want to... Um as we're here with graduation and thinking about this transition in life, I want to talk about, you know, the young adults. And that's really who um, my heart's been kind of pulling for to pray for, people that have just graduated and not just in Crosby, but like all around our region. Because as you can see, if you haven't been paying attention to national news, like our, our people are bleeding, right? People are hurting. And there is a dire need, a desperate need for change, and a desperate need for Jesus. So um, as we look in our community of Crosby, we see all kinds of faces, shapes, and sizes. Um, I pray that we're unified by one simple truth, and that's Jesus Christ. And the love that he bestowed upon all of us when he sacrificed his life on the cross, that is the true understanding and takeaway that I hope everybody, no matter what race, creed, or color you are, finds. So let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for today, Lord. And Father God, as we look out on our city, Father God, as we look out on our country, Father God, as we look at our nation, Father God, as we look on the world, Father God, I just pray, Lord, that we are unified, bonded together by love and truth, Father God, that you so established on that day. Before the formation of the world, Father God, you knew exactly what you had to do to bring us together. For Father God, you saw this even then. So, Father God, as I pray for these millennials, Father God, these young adults, Father God, and even the adults, Father God, no matter who you are, Father God, I pray that we're connected by one simple truth, Father God, and it's salvation in the gospel truth. And Father God, I just pray that if we, if there's some difference we feel, if I look at someone and I feel some kind of way, Father God, may I see you first, Father God, and then find myself in you, Father God, find my identity through the blood that was shed on Calvary. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for forgiveness and grace. Father God, I just pray right now that as we are unified, Father God, and understand what it means to graduate, to develop our lives, Father God, may we graduate into the idea of what salvation and unity is. Be with us on today, Father God, as we look up and see not just a church body, but, God, but Father God, a people of change and inspiration and togetherness and unity. Be with us on today, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. All right. While we're still in this mood of praying over our graduates, we need to also remember graduates come in all sizes and ages. And a lot of our graduates uh, 
our adults and, and, and of all ages, a lot of our graduates come from the trade schools that are very, very important areas that, uh, that we have in our community and region. And I want to I wanna just extend my, uh, this prayer and this, this spirit of prayer to all of them as well. We really want to include all stages of graduates, including disciples of all ages. We as Christians, we start as infants desiring milk. This is scriptural. And then meat. We want to graduate as mature Christians. And when we get to that maturity, what do we do? We help the others. That's the next level of maturity. So I want to, I want to just finish up by, by praying for our trade school graduates, our adult graduates at this time as well. Father, thank you as we've been praying. Father, first of all, thank you for prayer. Wow. This is exciting because we know that when we gather like this, you set a promise and you never break promises. And one of those is that, that you're right here in the middle. You're listening and answering. So with all the prayers that, we, that you've already, we've already brought up to you, Father, as well as this one, we want to lift up these adults. We lift up these trade school graduates. Lift up those that have went back to school and have graduated. Online graduates. Father, all of these people have a big part in our community and in our church. And we want to lift up our, our graduates in our disciple program. Those that have been through men's commissioning and women's commissioning. Those that are, that are going through it right now, Father. We pray for them as well because we need each other. We need this growth pattern to, to extend into our community so we can reach out to others. So we lift up our graduates today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, just real quick, because I do, I want to honor our high school graduates. Uh, I, I love these kids so much. Uh, the one thing that I love so much about them is they are serving in this church right now. And so if I could just real quick, if I could have Brian McDaniel come forward, because I want you guys to see their face. And Caitlin Gamble, I know she's here. If you guys could just come forward. I want them, everybody to see your face. And uh, also, uh, Liam Greenwood, he's not able to be here today, but you'll see him over here sitting at this camera recording every single week, usually uh, serving in this church body, and it's so exciting. Uh, Brian actually, uh, he, he went on a mission trip. Come on up here, come on up here. Uh, he went on a mission trip with us last year, and it was awesome to see him in that element, loving on children and serving God. Caitlin's on our worship team uh, for the youth. I mean, she's just in it, and uh, these are awesome. Listen, they're not just graduates. These are powerful uh, young people for the kingdom of God. So if you could just honor them, give them a hand. I want you to recognize their faces so that way you keep praying for them, uh, support them as they go to college, but also as they serve right here in this local body. Amen. I wanted to acknowledge that, but understand that each and every one of you are graduating, that God is moving you in something today. So let me wrap this up. As Jesus said that, that his food and his purpose and will is to do the will of his Father in a completion, a finishing of the work, of the assignment that God had given. David writes in Psalms 119, I meditate on your precepts. Consider your ways, I delight in your degrees. I will not neglect your word. We as believers, we are his church. We are the body. And it's not separated by your definitions of. Well, I don't know if that person's really a believer. That's not for you to decide. Now, we are called to be fruit inspectors. We understand that. We understand that. But because somebody's not exhibiting the measure of fruit that you think they should be exhibiting, you cannot question whether they're a believer or not if they're not at the level that you're at. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
And so we as believers, we are his church, we are the body, and we are to model to the best of our ability in every aspect of our lives. And let me help you with something that includes your social media. In every aspect of his life, we are to model the heartbeat and the breath of God. And in that, we are each and every one to manifest this and this alone, the love of God. The love of God. I met with a friend this past week. He made a very powerful statement about our mission. He said, I just have one thing. I just have one thing. I just have one thing. And I knew where he was going with this. And so I said, I would submit to you, you actually have two things. Because the one thing rolls into the second thing, so actually they are the same, and Jesus even identifies it as so. And I want you church to hear me today. You really only got this one thing. I don't have to give you a big long list of all these things that you, you really just got one thing. Jesus identified it when he was asked, trying to trick him, what's the greatest commandment? And he said, really, there's just this one thing. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, all your purpose, all your wholeness, all your destiny, and all your mind. Love God. And he said, the second thing is really just rolls into the first thing. So there's really just one thing. Here's what I want you to hear today. Is love your neighbor as yourself. Do you realize if we had a world that understood that one thing? We would have never watched those videos that repulsed us. We would have never seen our streets filled in protest nor riots. We would never seen our political leaders turn with fangs one towards another. If we could just get that one thing. Guys, this isn't rocket science. I submit you, it doesn't even take vast revelation. It's just one thing. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love others as you love yourself. It's that one thing. Because he said that if you'll do that, on this thing, on these, these commandments right here, the second one's just like the first. Love God, love others as yourself. On all these things hang the essence of the law of the prophets. This solves all the problems. It's the solution to all that ails us. It's, it's the, this is it right here. Do we truly hunger? Are we totally driven? And here's a self-evaluation moment. Is your heart the heart of Christ? Because I determined today that I wasn't going to voice a whole bunch of my opinions because I have them. I wasn't going to do that. But what I was going to do is challenge us all to examine our hearts. Is our hearts because you've all voiced your opinions. You've all had your thoughts. We've all had, I know, I've had them. I know you've had them. But is our heart the heart of Christ could we go back to that one thing so our hearts filled with compassion because Christ says can we identify the moments is our soul longing for the word of God manifesting in us my food is to do this the work that he has assigned to me and finish it that's what Jesus said my work is to do that one thing Hebrews 13, 7 says, remember your leaders who spoke God's message to you. Reflect on the outcome of their lives and imitate their faith. I just want to do that one thing. Nehemiah prayed for favor before the emperor of Persia. Listen to me. We talked about the ark shouldering the presence of God. It was meant to be shouldered, it was meant to be felt by us. Nehemiah heard 
that the city had been torn down and the walls were no longer there and the walls protected the presence. That's what it was there to protect the presence. The walls was there to protect the presence. The presence of God, the anointing of God, the favor of God, the hand of God, the move of God. And he heard the walls had been broken down. And when I heard these words, he said, I sat down and I wept and I mourned for days because the presence hadn't been protected. It hadn't been shouldered. It hadn't been felt. The weight hadn't been carried. So I wept for days. And then he prayed a prayer because the prophetic knows no boundaries of time or geography. And so he prayed the prayer of Israel. And the word of God tells us that those that bless Israel, God will bless. But the prophetic speaks to our land and our nation also today. So we lift up our whole world and we pray for Israel. We understand that. But I'm going to insert our nation into Nehemiah's prayer. And you tell me if it's not prophetic and pertinent today. As I heard these words and the presence was, was not guarded, the presence wasn't shouldered, it wasn't felt, it wasn't carried, I mourned and I wept for days. As I fasted and I prayed before God of heaven, and I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and your mercies with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive, please let your eyes be open, that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of this nation, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of this nation, which have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinance which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray the word. I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the furthest parts of the heavens, yet I will gather them. I will gather them from there and I will bring them to the place which I have chosen a dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. Oh Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayers of your servant and to the prayers of your servants who desire to fear your name. And let your servants prosper this day. And I pray that you would grant mercy. See, biblical success comes first from the realization that each and every one of us have the cancer of sin. And it eats away at the core of the spirit man. We have the cancer of sin that we have to understand and realize that apart from the blood of the great physician Jesus Christ being applied to our sin, for the redemption of our soul, we cannot be restored to biblical health or rightness with God. Proverbs tells us, in a man's heart, he plans his course, but God determines his steps. See, we have to find a hunger and a thirsting for a revelation of the Word of God. And then we have to pray for the illumination of the Holy Spirit activated in our life that makes God's truths become so real that we have that full revelation because we've spent that moment to press, to find encounter. And in encounter, we found revelation. In revelation, we found transformation. And in that transformation, I'm able then, and only then, to do that one thing. One thing. To love God with all that I have. That flows into loving others as myself. And that's void of where you grew up at. 
of your backgrounds or your experiences. It's void of your culture or your upbringing. Doesn't deal with the pigmentation in your skin. It's not relevant to the shape of your eyes. It's just that one thing. See, a lot of what we're seeing in our land, it's not a race issue. It's a humanity issue. Because we forgot to shoulder the presence. We forgot to carry it. And we, we submitted it to other things, other avenues and other tools. And we forgot that one thing. To love others just as God loves you stand to your feet today Lord Jesus I pray over each and every one here this your church your people in all of our imperfections in all of our diversity, in all of our falling downs, and in all of our getting back ups. The God, you help us to understand and to come to full revealed word of that one thing. To love you that causes us then to love others as we love ourselves. to pray for those that would speak all manners of evil against us to lift up and pray over those that would term our enemies to be able just to do that one thing Lord I pray that over your people today and if you're here and You never dealt with that cancer of sin in your life and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's as simple as that. All you have to do is, the Bible says, is just repent, to turn from that. To turn from that and find that one thing. So I'm going to pray over you all today. Lord Jesus, I thank you, O oh God, that you are God. I thank you, God, for your spirit that sweeps over us. I thank you, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit that activates your word in us. And Lord, I pray that you would call each and every one of us to repentance before you. For all the times that we missed that one thing, for all the time that we let even that simple self-will get in the way. God, we repent because we all know that we have sinned before you. And we all ask you to forgive us of our sin. And we ask you to help empower us even as the early church with a fresh outpouring, with a fresh oil and a fresh fire. That we learn what it is to pray in the Spirit, to pray in another language, to believe past where we are to where you can take us to. Teach us to pray. God, that we walk not as our own, but we walk truly as the children of God. That we then love you more than we love anything else. And that God, then you supernaturally give us the ability to love others. as ourself regardless of differences the God you engraft more of your heart in us that heart of mercy that heart of compassion a heart that looks past the mistakes a heart that sees potential 
graft in us more of your heart that sees destiny and purpose in others rather than mistakes or faults. Lord, do you help us to be the church that our food is to be about the mission that you have called us to and to finish the work that you have assigned us. That we love you. That we love others. Let your word resonate, resonate in us to the fullness of your purpose. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Everybody that God's graduating today, let me hear you. I said everybody that's going to that next level, let me hear you. Everybody that's believing God past where you are, let me hear you. Come on, there ought to be a Holy Ghost shout in the house today. Believe God past where we are. God bless y'all. We love y'all so very, very, very much. Again, we can go out the side doors. We can dismiss out of there to keep the congestion in the hallways. Remember, respect others, their distances, all of those things. Let's do that. Let's continue to believe God that he is merciful, he is gracious, and he is good in Jesus' name.